Hello, everybody. As we wait for people to come into our stream, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Rodgon. I'm an artist. I'm a designer. I am an instructor. Ah, and today I have the hips. And today I'm also your guide into the world of art. So if you guys want to improve your art, if you guys want to improve your drawings, if you guys want to improve your knowledge, uh, strap in, grab a sketchbook, grab something to draw with. Uh, we are going to be doing about a page or two pages worth of drawing today. And they are going to consist of drawing faces and taking your guys' suggestions and questions that you would like answered. Now, anybody that donates anything, like from a dollar or whatever, is gonna get priority over the questions. We're gonna play around with a dueling piano situation here, where you guys get to choose the theme, and you guys can ask questions right now, and I will take the most interesting ones and the ones that donate. So cool. So that'll be a fun way to be able to, first of all, make this into something that is actually going to be uh, viable for long periods of time. And it allows me a way to actually make a living with this. So let me see you over here. Yay, good afternoon, Rodgon. I hope you're having a good day. I am. So let's start drawing faces. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a couple tips and tricks as we go and we draw things and I'm going to explain a couple elements. And if you guys find something interesting, you guys find something that you learn, make sure to hit that little like button, make sure the little heart button. I don't know what they do on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't subscribed yet. And let's uh, start drawing faces. A lot of the times when we draw faces, a lot of landmarks don't really hit the mark, okay? so. Sometimes we draw the features way, way too far up in the front of our, uh, not in the front, not far enough in the front of our face. We have issues with the spacing between our eyes and our eyebrows and our eyes, and we tend to have an issue drawing things in profile if we don't understand how certain body parts work. So, Today, we are going to aim to understand a couple landmarks that are gonna help you understand where to draw certain items. And by the end of today, you guys will be significantly better at drawing faces, mostly because you guys will have knowledge, as opposed to you, that knowledge will help you understand and that knowledge will help you improve. By the end of today, I hope that I can inspire some of you guys to feel motivated enough to go and draw. If I can motivate you to put your pen on paper, that is something that will forever be a success story in my eyes. And we can proceed like that. Let's start like that, okay? So, faces. Faces consist of a couple things. If you're drawing from the most basic concept, we have two eyes and a mouth, right? That is the most easy face that you can draw. When you progress from there, maybe you add things like eyes, eyebrows, a nose, and maybe a mouth. Maybe some ears too. That's a good step. From there, we progress and we start adding style. This is where we mess up. This is where we should not be focusing on style. We should be focusing on learning how to move this in space, how to take that very basic concept and how to now navigate that in a three-dimensional world. From basic shapes to basic features to 3D. So essentially what you're doing is you're studying anatomy to get to this point, right? You need to understand that there's two eyes, a nose, a mouth. So you're adding little things that exist in your face. And the things that are visible are very easy to map out. Things that are not as visible, like your chin, your jaw, you know, the side of your face, your temples, your neck, all that stuff 
comes from understanding these very basic shapes and then applying knowledge of both perspective and anatomy. And by doing so, you give yourself the ability to see those two components as basic shapes. And when you're able to do that, it doesn't matter what shape you choose because you'll be able to just see the volume. So you'll be able to draw faces from boxes, from circles, from anything that you want because it's not going to be, it's just not gonna stop you. It's gonna just give you a different look. Right? It's going to call for different styles, different measures, different levels of detail are going to come from different shapes. So you'll understand that there is no basic way to draw a face. There's no basic way to control that. It's just literally what do you want to create and how do you want it to look? So, all right, all the way from South Africa, ballpoint at the ready, Rod Sensei, yeah. How's it going? Just uploaded a new drawing of Choso on here. You're always help me improve, woohoo. That's always nice to hear. So if you're drawing a profile, it doesn't always have to be that it's wider than taller. Because again, it depends on the type of character you're trying to portray. If you're trying to portray a character that has a big forehead and a sharp jaw, you need to have more space on both sides of this. Okay. Understanding proportions is going to help you understand things uh, are not always perfect. There's no perfect structure for humans. There's no perfect structure for noses. There's no perfect. There's so many variations that you can choose to do that it's really up to your imagination as to how you develop it. Your nose can be nice and perky or it could be a big conquer. If you know how to connect it, both of those are options that you can have with your character. So it doesn't matter if you're a pinup or you're an old man. When you learn that volume and shapes are just all interchangeable, if you understand where something goes, that's fine. Could you explain three-quarter eye placement? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the donation. Uh, let's explain three-quarter eye placement. So whenever you are drawing your eyes, a lot of the times people draw little teardrops, or they draw, you know, like little ovals or whatever. And that's perfectly fine. That allows you to draw eyes really simply. But the problem is that whenever we're drawing in three quarters, we have this big thing called the nose bridge that is blocking a little bit of this eye. So you end up seeing a little bit less than the other one. So whenever we're rendering them, they look a little bit different, right? They look, maybe sometimes they look like they're a little bit thinner, they look like they're a little smaller, but that's not really the case. <coughs> oh. I'm dying, ah. Yeah, that's not really the case. The case is that you have your eyeball your entire eyeball is there. You still have that same opening, but the thing that's blocking it is the nose bridge. So if you get used to drawing your faces and you draw both eyes completely, okay? Draw your eyes and with whatever level of detail you want. Draw them completely, okay? And then draw your nose. You will find that you get much more uh, accurate results and then you can go in and you can erase that part okay but go in and draw that first so that your accuracy starts getting better and your eyes in themselves are very easy to draw in very different features because an eyeball is just a couple circles circle one circle two circle three 
three circles give you an eyeball with the colorly part and the black part. And then if you draw an oval or a curvy line over it, you end up with an eyeball. You can always close it more by making that bottom lip a little bit smaller. But in general, you can get a very decent eye by just drawing this. Okay? One curvy line over a circle with two circles inside. When you draw the other eye, remember that it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a curvy line over a round sphere, but the nose is blocking a little bit. So hopefully that helps you understand. So thank you again for the donation. I hope that Paul Dunkel, I hope that that actually works. And let me show you guys some examples so that you guys have more understanding. So we have the ability to draw one eye by drawing a couple circles. Then we're gonna draw the nose bridge because that's the next thing that's there. And then this same circle is gonna fit within this space. The nose bridge goes up and around to go around our eye. This creates the eye pocket. This is your eye socket, okay? The top of the eye socket is where your eyebrows go. So this also gives you your temples because the side of this ends up being the side of your body. So as you guys can see, you can start replicating human anatomy a lot better. <laughs> so anybody else have any questions before we continue? I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Do -do -do. Remember, donations get priority in the question list, but they're not the only ones that get to ask questions. So if you just want to like ask stuff, feel free to ask it. Uh, it's just gonna be priority for those that donate. Hello, Radgon, Artista Tiago. Buenos dias, Artista Tiago, como estas? I don't know why I'm talking like in a Spanish accent. <laughs> Hablo español perfectamente bien. <laughs> what fundamentals should I be practicing for six months so you can improve greatly? Okay, so, so you want to improve really quickly, really fast. So if you want to improve really quickly, really fast, what you need to focus on is both your penmanship, aka exercises like drawing circles, boxes, cubes, cylinders, and drawing through your shapes to be able to find depth. Learning how to overlap your shapes is one of the most important elements in learning how to draw in general. Learning how something getting bigger is just a matter of making it larger because it's coming towards the camera, and something getting smaller, making it go away from the camera, is very crucial things that we normally use in elements like legs, feet, hands, fingers, all that stuff. Normally, when we're drawing legs, you know, we're not drawing them super heavily in perspective, but when we do want to send them in perspective, we want to be able to do so with ease. And learning how to do different exercises like this facilitates this. So understanding that, understanding how to overlap your lines will help you be not so afraid to overlap parts of your drawings. Being able to overlap drawings confidently is essentially the big difference between somebody being able to draw pose right and a pose forced. Chaos, thank you for the $5 donation. Uh, can you explain extruding noses while using the diamond triangle method? Yes, absolutely. So noses. So let's say that the reason that we're going to draw things from a triangle is because our anatomy calls for a very triangular shape right in the middle of our face. And that is in the form of that little nose pocket. 
This little tiny thing right here, the little triangle, is essentially where the cartilage for your nose comes out from. Okay, so if you have your nose cartilage, you have your teeth, your skull, blah, blah, blah. That's a really long teeth, by the way. But this little pocket, this little triangle, essentially gives you a top point, the intersecting crucible right here, that is that little dot right here, right? So whenever you're drawing and you draw that little indent, that's this indent right here. That's gonna lead to where your eyeballs go. Your eyeball's gonna be right in the middle of that. So you have your eyelid, it's gonna be a little bit above, a little bit underneath. And then from this top point and these points right here, all you have to do is draw a dot wherever you want your nose to be. And then you can connect it by connecting all three points. And this gives you a very basic semblance of a nose. Your mouth goes around your lips. Oh no, you're around your teeth. And then you have elements for your mouth and stuff like that. Okay? But we're focusing on the nose. So once you have a triangle, let's draw an extruding nose. Let's draw it all the way out here. We'll connect one dot, two dots, three dots. This is the intersection where my eye is going to be. This is going to be my nose bridge and the tip of my nose. So if I want like a nice French waiter type of situation, it would be something like that. If you wanted to break the nose bridge because you wanted to make it look like he's like a fighter or something, you just deviate that line at the top to make it look like a different line. So you go triangle, dot, and then you can break that nose up into different shapes. Right, so understanding this in different views is very easy too because it gives you access to drawing that nose like a little pyramid. So drawing it from different angles becomes a little bit simpler. Drawing it from, <laughs> literally from every view becomes a little bit easier, mostly because of the simplicity of the pyramid. So, you can play around with doing exercises like drawing a circle, drawing triangles, and drawing little noses on it. That's one way that you can practice doing your noses in all sorts of directions. You can play around with different nose types, little curvatures whatever you feel like, right? Like once you understand the concept, it's going to be really hard to unlearn it. Once you understand it, it's so hard to like deviate from it because it'll everything else will look wrong. I think I've been confusing the eye socket and the eyeball. Yeah, you have, <laughs> probably. Uh, your eye socket comes as your bone structure and then your eyeball sits right inside of that. This is where all the, the tissue for your wrinkles and your old age and stuff like that come from. This is the width of your cheekbone and this is normally how it attaches to your body. And that's how you find all those lines. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What pens do you use? They should sponsor me. 
What pens do you use? Yeah, I just use big. I want to get back into art, but don't know if it's worth leaving, learning because I... Okay, dude, I don't do art because I'm... Oh no, I'm competing against the computer. I don't want to do it. Dude, if I was competing against a computer and I didn't want to do something, I wouldn't get anything done. Like, like, are you serious? Like, like, oh, I'm afraid something will be better than me. So I'm not going to do it. Like, you're not ready for that then. Like, I'll just say it straight up. Like, if you, if you don't, if you feel like the only reason you want to do it is, I don't know, because, like, why would you care if AI does it, like, better? It's a different thing. Like, one is your creation and one is a prompt from a computer. Like, if you don't see the difference between that, that's a very concerning thing. And you should not really pursue art in a very serious way until you understand the difference between that. Like, if you don't understand the difference between, uh, oh, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't do this for other people. Like, I don't do this for other people. I do this for me. Everybody else just gets to be a part of it. <laughs> right? But it's always going to be you first. If you don't come first, you can't water other people's plants if you can't water your own. Okay? Like, you need to water your own garden before you go and garden, like, water anybody else's. So, and that is one of the most important things you gotta remember. Like, you have to use your artistic creativity for yourself. Um, when you start putting everything based on everybody else's, like, like, ooh, I want to do this because I'm going to get famous. Like, you're not going to get there. <laughs> you know, because shit's going to get hard. There's going to be a point where things get really hard. And when that hits the fan... When, when that hits, you're going to be like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> okay, it's hard. I don't want to do it anymore. And that's what happens when you do that. Uh, can you please show the mask method for animal faces? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the donation, King Cobra. You are very much appreciated. So if you guys want to learn how to draw uh, faces of animals, you guys can use that same triangle. Okay because we're still going to be using a skull. Like animals have a skull just like we do. They just have a little bit different shape. Instead of a dot, they have something with volume. And when you have something with volume, like a little snout, like a little bean bag or a little jelly bean or a little circle, that allows you to be able to draw that. If you need to draw that mouth open, that triangle gives you access to where your jaw is going to be. So you can draw a fully open mouth from there too. Ears, all that stuff just gets added on top and you have yourself a character. Now, this is not just relegated to things that are furry. You can do that with things that don't have, maybe they just have a curvy line, like a beak. Mm -hmm. right? Or they don't even have that sort of face. They maybe they have like a dolphin face. So you draw a triangle, you connect the top and the bottom, and you can draw yourself any sort of face you need that requires a skull. Anything that requires a skull can be used and adapted to fit within this scheme because that's just how skulls work. Any skull that you have, regardless of it being human, which would be something like this, right? A human and let's say an ape, the only difference is that that triangle, instead of going down, now goes forward. 
once you get comfy with that, you'll get used to being able to draw other shapes. You'll be able to morph your shapes a little bit and you'll be able to come up with awesome epic things like dragons and shit like that. Dragons, dinosaurs, reptiles, anything that you feel like drawing is gonna be a lot easier because we do that. So it just becomes a little bit a more intuitive way to draw it. Even weird ones like anteaters and stuff like that. So that's how that works. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, let me know so that we can go on to the next one. But thank you, King Cobra. I hope that that makes a little bit more sense. So triangle, beanbag, or box gives you access to frontal ones. Can I see you draw a wizard hate? No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take requests that are out of the lesson plan unless you guys do not uh, donation. If you guys do a donation, then yeah. I'll do I'll teach you guys whatever you guys want. I'm gonna be using YouTube as uh, the source for you guys to be able to get more direct learning, but it's also going to be prioritized for the people that donate. Just because I also need to make some money. So people that have the need to learn, you guys will learn, but sometimes it will be deviated by somebody that donates. Hello, I saw this live before going to work out. Just want to say your drawings are pretty okay. <laughs> oh, thank you uh, for telling me my drawings are pretty okay. I like to know that my drawings are pretty okay. <laughs> so the whole system is essentially that. and it's very easy to learn. <laughs> what is the biggest canvas to full completion you have done? I have done entire uh, murals. So if you would see myself about this big, if I were to be about that size, the canvas was probably about that big. And they had like little display lights that would highlight it. And they had a little plaque. And they had a hat. That's about as big as I had it. And then um, the actual concept itself was very abstract. It was more so like landscapes because it was really easy to do, right? It was like a lot of landscapey stuff and it was a lot of like splatter effects to create environmental stuff and then just little shapes and stuff like that to create like a little fake city. And it was like a bunch of little tips and like, imagine like Bob Ross type of situation, but with like a fantasy setting. And that's what I created. Do, do, do. How often do you draw stuff outside of your comfort zone? The thing is, I don't really have a discomfort zone anymore. Uh, I, I just don't. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, once you get to a point where you understand uh, enough, there's very little that you can't do. There's because the body is only consisting of a certain amount of things. Right. Once you learn how to control those things, it's just a matter of how you do it, not can you do it. And when you learn, for example, to draw a human body super quickly, like bare volume instead of 
there's very little that you can't do. What's up? Time to get over to YouTube as well. Hey, thanks, Wes. <laughs> I need to get I, I need to give you mod powers here. How do I do that? There you go. I found you. Uh, mm, this one. There you go. You are now a mod. I don't know if there's enough. I don't know if there's like enough sex bots here. Well, I don't think there's enough sexy bots. Nobody's trying to make you go into their lives. I haven't seen them at least. <laughs> All right, so we are moving on to our toned paper side of our sketchbook. So again, donations get priority. But until then, I'm just gonna draw cool stuff. I'm gonna teach you guys how to draw eyes really, really quickly. Eyes can be taught as a line with a dark top and a dot. <laughs> so if you draw a circle and you just darken the top, just darken the top line a little bit, it's gonna give you a really cool eye. So you just go boop, 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 line, line. Upgrading your eyes to the point where it's so simple that two lines can generate an eyeball is very, very good to have. Okay? Being able to change two lines that intersect each other into eyeballs of your choosing will be something that stays with you forever. <laughs> Can we play Would You Rather? Sure. I will gladly play that game. That sounds fun. So I will gladly take Would You Rather. Should viewers be spamming the hearts right now? Yeah, you guys can uh, spam the hearts. You guys can spam uh, the likes, the shares, the subscriptions, all that stuff. Like, that's how you guys help me. You know, that, that's how you guys help me grow. If you, I don't need your guys' money. I need your guys' uh, little clicky button fingers. Uh, that's what I need. I can't do it myself. Or I would. But what I need is you guys' help through that way. That's the only way I need your guys' help. Sometimes I draw different eyes at work. Yeah, eyes are fun. Eyes are really fun. Eyes are like the most expressive part of our body. A lot of people just don't know how to draw them, and it hurts my brain. Because eyes are four, no, three circles. One, two, three. Three circles. One oval or one little curvy line that's really nice and thick. And then a thinner line that's nice and narrow. So you get this situation. Okay. So once you do those two things, that's really all you really need to know. Circle, circle, circle. One curvy line that goes over it and a thin line that intersects it. I add whatever styling I feel like to the top line only. Well, not only, but you can primarily to the top line. Add a highlight if you feel like it, and you have yourself an eye. Draw your nose bridge. Do the same thing. Curvy line. Curvy line. Eyelashes. Eye. And just like that, very simply, we're able to draw a nice little face. Do, 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 do. Nothing to it, no complications, nothing to guess, nothing to be like, oh, well, how about this? How about that? No, it's more like you just draw curvy line number one, curvy line number two, curvy line number one, curvy line number two. Thicken it up if I want to, give it eyelids or eyelashes if I want to, and then decide the inside based on whatever styling I feel like drawing that day. Mm. 
Your highlight is just the light interacting with your face. It's not an included part of your eyeball. Like you don't always have to draw a highlight. Highlights are extra and a highlight works like this. Uh, okay, let's see, hold on. Help it, I won't let me spam anymore. <laughs> Finally, catching alive, hell yeah. It's cool to studying Luma's method then finding Rodgon to simplify everything. Yeah, yeah, you can think about it like that. That's kind of cool. So again, let's see, uh, an eyeball. Here's a light source. In this case, we'll draw a sun, okay? If we draw our three circles, we have an eye, right? This eye is going to interact with this light by creating a highlight. The highlight is just a reflection of this light source. It's the exact same as that light source. Okay, so if my light source is there, my highlight would be right there on my spherical shape, and then I can draw the rest of my circles around it. The highlight doesn't always have to touch the middle of the eye either. If your eye is pointing this way, and this is your eyelid, and the light source is over here, the highlight would be right there. It wouldn't be on the actual eye. So the highlight in itself, it just moves depending on the light source. If your light source changes, let's say your light source is a box, guess what shape your highlight is? Because it's just a reflection of it. Okay, your highlights, whatever highlights you choose, if you're drawing your eyes and you're drawing like a quadrillion highlights, like you're like, pew, 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 right? That means you have three light sources lighting up your eyes. That is all that that means. So again, donations will take priority over other things whenever we are streaming on YouTube. Normally when you go over on TikTok, I just take all the questions and answers. That is your guys' like time to ask if you guys don't want that. If you guys do want to help out, that is the best way to do it is through these streams. And you got to get more information as well because you guys get targeted information. All right, so let's see. More stuff about the eyes. What other stuff about the eyes? Um, let's see. We covered the shape. We covered the three circles. Oh, we can change the... like. Okay, once you know that that's three circles, right? Well, now you can change those three circles in different ways. Make one bigger, one smaller. You can make them both smaller. You can make them both big. Right? You can change these in any way you feel like now because that's the only thing keeping you from drawing your really cool anime eyes and sharingans and The styling you choose comes after your foundations are set, okay? Once you know how to build something, the concept of drawing a style based on these things is irrelevant. You can come up with anything for an eye. You can even make a box into an eye once you understand the concept of a dark line and the concept of the shapes inside. You can turn anything into an eye once you understand how that works. But trying to do so before you understand it leads you down a road of guessing instead of knowing. 
And when you do that, you end up with a style that can't be replicated, can't be explained. And at the end of the day, that just leads to a very ugh, understanding of your artwork. <laughs> so once you understand how to construct something, you can deconstruct it as you want at, at your will. But until you get to that level of understanding, you should not be trying to just correct everything with style. Uh, style, what is it? Style is the fool's knowledge. Something like that. Someone told me that once. Like, only the fool thinks style replaces knowledge. I think that's what it was. All I can draw is weird Shreks. <laughs> what is this art style called? This is called teaching. <laughs> this is me. This is me explaining how to draw. This is me trying to help you guys unlock that little. Peek. So, I'm gonna make it easier for you guys. When we get to fifth, uh, no, when we get to hundred dollars in donations, uh, I will do something. I don't know. Once we get to that, that's what I need to hit to be able to get a new scanner. Uh, so if we get to that point, then we can talk about something, I don't know, I'll figure something, I'll do like a little giveaway or something. But that's what we need. That's what we're aiming for. So we're gonna keep on drawing until we get to $100 in donations and see how long it takes. Okay, I subscribe. I have a few Shreks on my channel, but not a YouTube creator. <laughs> so good, I could never do this. Yeah, you can. You can totally do this. That is what my whole channel is for. My whole channel is to show you that there is a path to understanding all this, right? Anybody that wants to be an artist now has a slight easier path to getting there because of my channel. And I love that. Can we make another character when you hit your goal? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, dude, we can make another Bernie. Or we can add another character to the Bernie story. Hey, can demo the Cyclops method? Ooh. Ooh. The Cyclops method, huh? For the mouth. <laughs> that one's funny. Uh, essentially, your mouth and your eyes can be drawn the same way. A big overlapping line in an intersecting bottom line, okay? The only difference is that with an eye, you draw the details of your eye and your eyelashes, and with a mouth, you draw negative space and volume for your lips. So the only difference between those two things is how you end up using your overlapping lines later. The concept itself of learning this very powerful master shape is that it allows you to be able to get creative with it. So this could be a mouth or this could be eyes. So that is something that just helps. I was thinking of some kind of animal demon creature for a character. Yeah, we can do that, but we need to we need to up the donations. We've only done ten dollars, so I guess not a lot of people are very curious today. Oh, oh my God! Ah, oh, you drew Bernie. Yay, Bernie's fun. Bernie is our half burnt bunny, the dragon killer. So in this case, that ear is gonna go this way. So Bernie is a nice little adorable bunny, right? He's so cute and sweet and silly and loving. And then he has his dark side <laughs> that is all burnt up because a dragon burnt him with dragon fire. So he goes around killing dragons 
So he goes and he takes his little magic wand with eternal dragon fire that gives him magic. And he goes around killing all the dragons that he can find. So he just, it's a very gruesome cartoon. So he just goes around destroying as many dragons as he can because he is the epitome of my pettiness. He is my pettiness embodied. <laughs> if I were to be able to release my pettiness against people that annoy me, that would be how I would release my, my fury upon the world. So, say hi to Bernie. Bernie the dragon slaying mage lived by the sea. Kills every dragon that he just happens to see. He normally likes to decapitate them too and take them home. He need, he likes to hang their uh, their heads on his wall. <laughs> so that's Bernie. But he's addicted to adrenaline. <laughs> to what? Hi, could you draw a big pony with mustache and a bushy brows? Nah, I'm not going to take like super special requests like that unless there's donations. Um, if you guys donate even like the smallest amount so I can get to my goal, then I'll draw like whatever you guys ask me to. But whenever it's like a random little thing like that, mm, unless... Nah, not unless there's like some sort of incentive there. <laughs> dragon head trophies. Yeah, so he takes his dragon heads, right? He like mounts them, labels them, and then he has their faces like mounted on the wall. So he's there and then he's gonna have like a big chair and he's gonna be chilling with his books and stuff. And he's gonna have a bunch of them like, he's just gonna be like lined up with dragon heads. <laughs> so that's like how his house is gonna look like. It's just gonna be a bunch of dragon heads. Like mounted. That's gonna be cool. And I have somebody in interested in like, you know, developing the story a little bit more. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be fun. That's one hardcore bun bun. You draw better than I can. I sure can. <laughs> I probably draw a lot more than you do too though. So that's probably why. So again, I will reiterate this. We will keep on streaming until we get to $100 in donations. So if you guys want to ask questions and you guys feel like contributing anything, let me know. Can you draw guts from Berserk? Ooh, I'm gonna have to do some research, but yeah. Berserk. Cool. We'll draw some guts. All right, so guts seems to be short haired. He is very vicious and he has a big ass sword. So let's draw guts. Mm -hmm. He's gonna have a nice sharp jawline, midline. The nose is gonna be a little bit taller and it seems like the nose it's kind of broken, so it has like a lip and a cap. 
Our triangle is going to be right there. That's going to give us guidance to our eyebrows. He seems to have really low eyebrows, but they reach the side of his face. So that means that my eyebrow is going to sit right there. And this is going to be the side of my face. He seems to have like this angry smirk look to him. So let's give him an angry smirk by bringing the eyebrows down. We will draw the eye a little bit smaller to be able to recreate this very uh, comic bookish feel to him. And he has, from what I see, he seems to be bleeding a lot. So he's going to have a little bit of blood on him later. He's gonna have a nice big chin. So I'm going to draw a little bit more space towards the bottom of his face. And he doesn't seem to have a very strong lip, so it's gonna be pretty close to the skull. From there, he doesn't have super sharp cheek line, like cheekbones or anything, so I'm just gonna round that out a little bit. And he does seem to have like a couple of flecks of hair, so I'm gonna find my hairline by drawing around my shape. I'm gonna find the circle at the top. That's gonna be my hairline, and he has the front of my hairline's right there. My ear is gonna be around here. And he doesn't have sideburns. Does he have sideburns? Yes, he does. He has like a few. And then he has short hair, but he has like some bangs in the front. Okay, and then he has short hair. So it's not gonna stick too far away from his skull. And it's going to be just kind of like Z strokes. Okay, the hairline cuts off right here and it goes back like a little dot in there. Cool. Give myself a little bit more space in the back. Now he has a big sword, so we gotta draw the sword. The neck is gonna come from here and he has a really thick neck. So I'm gonna give him a really, really thick neck. And that means that his connection to the body is going to be also relatively big. My shoulders are gonna expand from the back of my rib cage and the front of my rib cage. They're gonna expand and go to where the shoulders would be. This is a lot wider than a normal person because I'm trying to add a lot more girth to this character. From there, this little round shape that I have becomes the connecting point for my neck. So from my ear down to this point, I have one muscle. From the other ear that is behind our head, to the middle is another muscle. And then this has a girth. The neck muscles connect into this, but he has like a cloak. So this little circle that I have is already giving me a line that goes around the front to the back of my body. So all I need to do is add girth to that. And I have myself a cloak. Let's add a little bit of color to differentiate. We'll add a little bit of shadows to his eyes. He seems to be a very broody character. And he seems to bleed a lot. So I'm gonna <laughs> He seems to be covered in blood a lot. If I want this light to look lighter, I'm going to darken the outside coloring so that that line work looks a lot lighter. Anything that I want to pop out, I need to darken something next to it so that it pops out. If I want this to pop, I need to darken that. If I need this to pop out, I need to darken around it, okay? If I want this ear to pop out, I need to darken around it so that it pops out. From there, he has a big ass sword, so I'm gonna draw the sword in the back. And does it have a specific shape? I don't see a shape being given. It's just a big claymore. I think so, I think it's just a big sword. So I'm just gonna draw a big sword. 
Uh, hello, teacher. I was hoping you could please explain a beanbag method drawing for animals. Yeah, we can totally go over that. Thank you for the donation of $10, by the way. So let me finish up this one to give this guy what he wanted. So now we have guts. <laughs> kind of cool. So the beanbag method for animals. So whenever you're drawing characters in general, uh, this is going to be a, like relevant to a lot of things, not just animals. The first thing you have to learn to do is draw a circle, right? And learning to draw a circle with circles inside the circle gives you volume. It starts giving you the idea of like a sphere or some sort of three-dimensional shape. When you learn to control that in different aspects, it helps you understand guidelines and then end up helping you understand mapping points. So the more you have, the more you're able to control where things go. So understanding that is step one. Understanding that is going to be what leads you to being able to draw two spheres and generate volume in the form of a beanbag, right? Understanding that these little overlapping lines can be used to create depth is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool because you can get a lot of depth with a very minimal line work. So when you have that, Mermaid Mako here, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Um, let's, um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. Um, the circle, once you combine two of them, you can do little beanbag shapes. Once you learn how to do beanbag shapes, you can mold these in any way you need. You can stretch them. You can make them big into a small one. You can do a bunch of things to generate different sizes and volumes. Right? So whenever you want to draw something cute, like let's say, like, we'll keep it nice and simple. Let's draw a big circle and a small circle. And by using these overlapping lines, I'm going to use that to separate the head from the body. And then use things like color to be able to give myself a semblance of a very popular animal. So understanding the very basics of this allowed me to use that little separation in a way that allowed me to draw something cute really, really easy. If I apply this in different forms and you just apply a little bit of reference, you can draw pretty much any animal you feel like from a little beanbag. You just need to learn how to overlap specific lines. So once you understand that, later on, later on you can use this as a breaking point so you can learn how to draw anatomy regardless if it's an animal anatomy or if it's human anatomy. Okay, you can start learning how to use that beanbag to manipulate your shapes to be able to draw animals or humans. So that is essentially how you would use the beanbag knowledge to be able to progress to the next step. Uh, mix of human animals. Bro, I'm trash at shading, never took classes. I'm from Juarez, Chihuahua. I can draw manga or great letters for graffiti, but I need someone there to show me. Uh, well, we are about a third of our way to our goal. So if you feel like donating a little bit, we can talk about that. Priority will be given to people that donate at this point, mostly because I need a new scanner. So that is the only reason that I'm asking for donations. 
<laughs> Make a Koopa shell. Huh, Koopa shells are fun. Koopa shells incorporate one of my favorite shapes, and this it's this, right? This little overlapping shape is one of my favorite master shapes because if you learn to give this volume by drawing circles, you can draw really cool, interesting things like, I don't know, Koopa shells, turtle shells, duck beaks. I used to do it a lot for duck beaks. Like that was the way that I used to draw my duck beaks. <laughs> that little Pringle shape. Please draw Deku. Nah. Again, if, if, if donations happen, I'll be more than happy to. But I'm not gonna draw the anime characters you want just for nothing. Not in this stream. Yay, how you doing? Uh, did you know keeping your thumb bent while you hold the pen actually cutting off the circulation? I used to do the same, what do you mean, like this? I don't really do this, so I'm constantly opening it down. So it's kind of like my fingers doing like this, constantly. So I'm super strong, look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, look at that muscle. Dibuja una jabalina. Jabalina, that's a, that's a boar? Right? Is that a boar? Is that what a javelina is? I think that is. I forget how their ears go. <laughs> Draw a thumb bicep. Ooh, thumb bicep. So if we have our thumb, Right, that's the top of our thumb. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, some veins and everything. What? No way. Boars are closer to sheep than than pigs? Nuh-uh. Okay, so let's see. What have we recapped so far? So, so far we have drawn faces. We have explained the anatomy of things. We have explained how to draw the features and how to see basic shapes. We have talked extensively about the eyes and how you can use those and understand how and where to place those. We have talked about the nose. We have talked about the face in order to draw animals to use that triangle as well. We have talked about the skeleton and how that differentiates from things to things. You guys asked how is the biggest piece of artwork I've ever done and that's about this big. Then we started going into eyes and we went into designing eyes in two simple lines, one thick line, one curvy line that intersects, and then draw your style inside, boom. And then I explained how to draw the actual eye, circles, and then overlapping lines, generate eyeballs just as easy. Then somebody donated some money and then they wanted to know how to draw like basic shapes from beanbag animals and you guys asked for an anime character. <laughs> Gotta make him a little bit more like he seems like he gets beat up a lot. Draw an axolotl. Axolotl, so cute. Axolotls are adorable. <laughs> Maybe draw my logo. Oh yeah, let me draw your logo. L let, oh my God, please. 
allow me the, the opportunity to draw your logo. Oh, please, sir, will you give me exposure? <laughs> Get out of here, dude. <laughs> Uh, can you explain more about the turtle shell method? There's a, a clicking moment for me that would be very useful. Yeah, sure. So, if you get used to drawing your shapes like an infinity sign, right? But get used to knowing that this is the front and this is the back. By doing that, you allow yourself the ability to be able to draw around your shapes better. Things like hats and beanies and stuff like that will be a lot easier for you to understand. Understanding that that's just a circle and you're slowly going to be taking that circle out of its normal rotation by just pulling points and you end up in a situation like this, essentially you're pinching it in the middle, right? But then you're taking one of these lines a single one side and they're using that to create depth. So that helps you understand hats and stuff like that better. Okay, whoever donates the next amount gets to choose the theme for our next page. We're about a third of our way there a third of our way to our new scanner. So, your guys' help, I can get a new scanner by the end of today. Uh, or horses, I guess now they're similar, and I just never get the angles right. I think that just helped me with lips a lot more. Yeah, yeah, no, lips are very similar. Lips are very similar to that. They're like this, right? They wrap around and they go around. So this will help you with your lips a lot. You just need to know like anything, honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, like you can donate a dollar, you can donate 50 cents. <laughs> you can donate anything you want. Some people donated 50 bucks, but I would never expect anybody to donate that much. That, that seems a little bit, I, I wish that I could contact that person because I'm like, ooh. That seems like a little excessive to donate. Uh, but, you know, I do appreciate it. And it does help out the ability to buy the equipment needed to be able to teach you guys a little bit better. You better go live Friday when I get paid. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't even worry about it. Like, um, like I said, if it's something that you guys can help with, that's fantastic. It's not something that I'm like constantly ever asking you guys to do. Oh, thank you, AJ Arts. Uh, you get to ask a question if you if you wish it. If you wish to, you can dictate the first sketches of our next page. So, Mr. AJ Arts, thank you so much. And that puts us at over a third. How about more stuff on lips? Ooh, perfect. So, mouths in general are actually relatively easy to draw. Can we get some dragon faces? Okay, we'll do lips and then dragon faces. Dragon faces. So we'll draw dragon faces there. Uh, I can't get it, the but we'll draw lips. Right here. Cool. Uh, also like human faces, angles in general. Okay, I'll talk to you guys about that. So lips, lips in general are going to be very easily dictated by two lines. So if you draw one line, one curvy line, kind of like with eyeballs, and you dictate the bottom line intersecting like this, you can think of this like the bottom part of your upper lip. So your upper lip is going to go in volume up from there. You can draw the little dents and stuff like that. And then you talk about the top part of your inside of your bottom lip. So this is the top part of your bottom lip, and that also needs girth. The overlapping of the top line is what provides you the notion of a mouth. So if you overlap that top line, 
and you add volume up from there, you have access to drawing as voluminous of a lip as you feel like. If the mouth is very open, the lip tends to be a little bit thinner because you're stretching out the spacing. So if you open up your mouth a lot, your lips tend to be a little bit thinner because they're stretching out from those angles. So it's still one curvy line, one inside line, and then you add whatever detail inside to draw your mouth, okay? When it comes down to the side, it goes curvy line number one, curvy line number two, and then your volume goes up and connects back. This will look very similar to how we draw eyeballs. Okay? The eyes and the lips are not very different from each other. The mouth in general can be broken down into two lines and then when you need variations of it, you can always add an extra element inside. Okay? You can always change these to any styling you feel like, depending on what you require from your design. Big bottom lip, big upper lip, gigantic upper lip, little tiny bottom lip. The possibilities are endless. Okay, so I hope that that helps because that's something that helps you a lot. And when you're applying it to the face, find your nose, the edges of your nose, draw a little fan, and that's going to give you the spacing you need for your mouth. So from the edges, draw a fan, and that's gonna give you the edges. You can draw that fan in different directions to get different facial expressions. Okay? So this one's straight down, this one's a little bit this way. If you draw it going up a little bit more, you end up in a situation where you have much wider range. But Essentially, that is what controls the mouth. I call it the mustache line, but that's another way of seeing it. Show me how to draw. That's what I'm doing. Curvy line, intersecting line, thickness with just black can give you nice, simple lips for your designs. So if you're going to be doing pinups or anything like that, all you need to do is draw one curvy line that's thick, one intersecting line that's thin, or a little bit thinner. Draw your fan up, and then you have your spacing for your nose. I've often seen people draw with the top lip in three parts. Yeah, I don't like that. So what they do is this, okay? They tell you to divide it into three parts, the side of the lip, the middle of the lip, and the side of the lip. And then they tell you to separate the bottom part into two. The problem with doing this is that, no, it, there's nothing wrong with it. Technically, it's, a, yeah, it's a decent way to draw your lips. The thing is, it's complicated to draw that in space. So if I told you to draw this, but draw it in the profile, you would be like, uh, uh, you'd start overthinking it a little bit. I teach that this line, this bottom line, it's just the line you draw first, then you draw this one, it gives you an overlapping line, and then you just draw your volume up from there. That is replicable in every single position that you want to. That is so much easier to replicate when you want to add a little bit of depth. Okay, so that is essentially why I teach it like that. 
This is easy to control. Two lines. Two lines. All right? Understanding the inside of your mouth is going to take a little bit of anatomy knowledge. But if you're just looking for simple cartoony mouths, this is your go-to. Because that's all you really need to do. All right, so that is lips in general. So I hope that that uh, helped. Hola, Rod Gone. Podrías hacer una clase enfocada en las grasas corporales. Me interesa hacer pinups, chubby. Uh, yeah, I can totally do ch uh, chubby pinups, but uh, again, I'm focusing mostly on the donation aspect of things right now because we need to get to $100. So we need to get to $100 so that I can buy a scanner. Okay, so now the dragon faces. So dragon faces are going to be a lot easier than you think to draw. Um, normally, I start my dragon faces by drawing a big triangle in the front of whatever circle. <coughs> ah. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, so triangle. And the triangle. Just like with my noses, like with a human nose, I would draw a triangle, a dot, and connect the dots to come up with the nose, okay? So if I'm doing a dragon, that's going to be a lot bigger, and it's normally going to have a little bit more volume than just a dot. So I do the same thing, and I connect my triangle from all three points over to my jaw. Now, dragons tend to have a lot more jaw structure going into underneath their face. So whatever line this is, ends up going a little bit farther back, and that becomes the structure for my jaw. From there, I get to choose how wide I want this, and it connects back onto the actual circle. The width of my neck is gonna be based on that circle as well, and you can always taper it onto the jaw structure so that it looks like it's a little bit wider if you want. The eyes are going to sit within this circle, this triangle, it's going to sit right behind that. And normally dragons have very, very strong and very big eye sockets. So they have big brow muscles and their eyes tend to look like they're sunken in to their eyes. Sometimes that's a very exaggerated way of doing it, but normally it would be something like this. Circle, triangle, shape, top, bottom. Using that triangle to differentiate perspective is going to be key. The bottom of that triangle has already given me a tilt. So using that ability and that tilt in those triangle points, I'm going to use that to be able to draw both my teeth on both lines draw that triangle down, and I draw myself my other jaw, this extends a little bit farther back, and this connects, and that's where you get the little meshy part. You can draw your tongue. Your eye socket, again, is going to be sunken in, and then your jaw structure has to have width, and it connects back to that circle. Eye, eye socket, and I'm going to draw circles heavier around it so that it looks like it's deeper in there. You can add noses, you can add beaks, you can add bumps, you can add lumps, you can add horns. Horns tend to come from either the cheekbone, right, wherever this happens, or from the eyebrow. So the eyebrow itself Right? Your eyebrow, your brow muscle, is going to be the predecessor to wherever your horns go. Or your cheekbone that goes around your eye socket, this leads to where your bones spur out. Triangle. The circle gives me 
the reins from my head. I never have to guess anything. You can add things like, I don't know, any sort of styling you require, honestly. What? Stop spamming. Please, I beg what? Like, there's very few things that annoy me more than people just spamming. Like, it really does annoy me. Like, to me, it, it's equivalent of somebody standing up in a class and being like, Pay attention to me! Pay attention to me! Look at me! I'm asking this! Come on! I'm asking this! It's just that annoying to me. So I highly, highly suggest that you guys don't do that if you guys want me to ever, ever answer your questions. Okay, so now that we understand that dragon heads are just a circle, a triangle, and girth, uh, have trouble drawing clothes folds. Okay, clothes folds are next. Clothes folds. Okay, so once you understand that that triangle dictates where your head goes, that bottom of that triangle gives you the bottom of your mouth or your jaw, and you can just use that guideline to be able to draw your head a little bit different. So you draw your triangle, you draw your guideline to whatever shape, and now you have access to drawing that from different perspectives. You just need to learn to draw things in different perspectives. So it's just going to be a matter of you understanding how to overlap your lines. And just learning how to maneuver that into different angles will help you understand a little bit more about how things like that can work. Your level of detail that whatever you choose to draw in, it's going to be up to you. But now at least you have that knowledge to be able to draw them effectively. My dragon heads have absolutely never looked better. Yay! Okay, so now let's go on to Cannibal Gamer. Clothes, could you touch on that? Okay, so cloth folds. So understanding cloth folds is going to come in understanding the basic cylinder and understanding that clothing in general clothing in general are going to be uh it's just going to be volume lines that are enhanced a little bit towards one side and then you get to do that high five more you beautiful legend thank you my dragons look fabulous hey yay thank you so volume perspective is what allows you to be able to draw clothing, right? Being able to see that volume, even within the most simple shapes, is as easy as just drawing a circle that points two edges together. Now, clothing sometimes bunches up. So all this, when it's really baggy, you end up having lines that go all over the place. And those lines are the ones that give you the overlapping shapes to be able to draw that. So when you have your, your clothing, you find your volume, you find the, like, the length of how wide you want that volume to be, overlap a couple lines, and then just follow those around your shape to be able to create and that is how folds tend to work with clothing. Can you please show how to draw the head of a snake? Well, essentially, it's going to be very close to that of a, of a dragon. But let me continue with clothing because they don't need it. So if we have a basic character. 
Okay, let's just draw a basic character. We don't worry about the head. So we're going to have a couple elements that are going to affect how clothing folds. When our arms get folded, when our arms or legs are folded, so we'll draw one leg like that, and whenever things compress against each other. So we'll draw an arm going down. So first of all, clothing comes from perspective. We need to find the points that connect our body parts and give depth to our body. And that comes in the form of a couple different circles that happen to be intersections whenever there's like an L. Intersect those two together and you're gonna have yourself a nice connecting point. Okay? Once you learn that that can be rotated in any direction, you're going to have a lot of fun with understanding posing. Okay, understanding that those little circles are the magic behind understanding how to pose something. Once you understand that, it's great. Now, once you have those, it also gives you access to drawing volume lines on your character. Sometimes clothing just is parallel to our clothing, right? Sometimes it's just parallel volume. So it's like this, and then you have parallel volume. So you just have to dictate which way gravity is taking over. In this case, like if you wanted to draw shorts, that little circle would fall down and then connect back to that circle, giving you a little bit of an overlap. Same thing would happen here if I wanted to draw shorts. I would just draw a circle, connect it back to that circle. If I had baggy pants, this becomes a little bit bigger. Everything that connects it gets a little bit bigger. Anytime that you see an overlapping line, that is where there's going to be a little bit of folds. And you're gonna have to look at the reference material if you're drawing from reference, you're gonna to have to just look at it and just look for those. Same thing happens with clothing in the upper body. Okay, the volume gets added, volume gets added, and then you just draw it. It can be in any part of the body. Okay. Once again, Rodgan has given his effective techniques. Thank you. Hey. Your lessons have helped me a lot. Rod going, my art has improved exponentially. Woohoo! That is what I do. That is what I like. All right, so we are about halfway there. We are halfway through the donations needed for today. So, anybody else have any questions that they would like answered? Uh, donations don't have to be of a certain type. It can be of any size, shape, or form. I've been giggling to myself like a maniac, drawing just so many dragon faces. <laughs> dragons are fun, dude. Like, dragons are really fun. Once you understand that they're just, like, jagged lines, it gets really, really cool, and then eventually you're going to be able to give them bodies and stuff like that, too. <laughs> How about hands? Yeah, more than happy to teach hands. Anybody want to anybody wanna choose that topic? <laughs> hands are what I struggle with dragon bodies yeah we can totally get dragon bodies but whoever donates next gets to choose this is like a dueling piano bar now <laughs> if you guys donate a little bit so I can get to the goal that I need, I'll be happy to give you guys all that knowledge. 
Oh, that juicy knowledge. <laughs> so have you helped out the map of the head of an animal? Yeah, we just did that. Woohoo, John Alva, want to help hit the goal. Off topic, would you love to see sketch based on my shirt brand, Bilano? Biano. Always love villains, but never their actions. So, see a sketch based on my t-shirt brand. I don't know what your t-shirt brand is, though. And I don't really have the ability to go onto the internet to do that. So I'm going to draw, I don't know, like, what would you like me to draw something different? Because I don't really know how that would work. How am I going to look at your logo and like look at your page and see what you're doing and do that? But I can teach you how to draw villains. Villano. So let's say you want to draw a villain. So what's a very interesting villain? Dragon bodies and wings. <laughs> okay, we'll do dragon bodies over here. Dragon bodies. But let's draw villains. Okay. Villano is just the name. Oh, Villano? So if you were just trying to draw somebody like Villano. Okay, so we were gonna do something like that and we wanted to make this into a villain. Like uh, we could possibly do something with the V. You know, so it's like, like scary eyes or something. Something like that could work. Maybe stylize the V a little bit. That'd be kind of cool. Or if you were gonna go with like more fancy. Make it really sketchy and it's gonna give you the villain like approach to it. Bah, bah. Stupid, all these dragon faces are getting so stupid. You have unlocked something dangerous. Absolutely, hope so. Uh, all these, <laughs> okay, so now let's go, let's draw one more Viano. Let's see, let's do like a 3D one. So we have like this, we have a little bit of depth, and then we're gonna be <laughs> sorry, wait, what? John Alba, sorry, Hannah. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't really know what you wanted, but hopefully that works, and you can draw like really villain eyes with your, with your logos. Maybe even white eyes, like. Shh. You know, you could just do that for your branding. That'd be kind of cool. And then you make this into the V. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then the yellow. Oh, that'd be cool. Anyways, let's go on to the next one. We are at $59. We are $40 away from our goal. So let's make our goal happen. Dragon bodies. So we have taught you guys how to draw dragon heads, right? So we have learned officially how to draw dragon heads from a triangle. So the dragon body is going to be dependent on the type of dragon you're gonna want. But mostly it's gonna come from your neck fanning out because dragons have big thick necks sometimes really long how do you draw different poses we'll talk about posing over here okay so i have to go now but thank you hey yeah just watch it whenever we get like onto uh when it goes on to stream uh, when it goes on live so we have our dragon we have our dragon head we have our dragon jaw we have everything from that circle that we draw initially, we're gonna draw our neck coming down. The bodies are gonna be very similar to human bodies. They're gonna have a rib cage, right? They're gonna have hip bones. 
and they're going to connect. Only thing is that in between the hip bones, we're going to have another circle in the back, and that's going to be the tail. The actual structure for them is going to be very similar to that of a human. You're gonna have arms that are connected to your collarbone. You're gonna have your muscles connecting to the middle of your collarbone. And then your legs are gonna come out in the form of a thigh, a shin, and into the bottom of your feet, into whatever toes we have. So it ends up just looking a little bit different. Sometimes. Let's see, our arms, if we wanted little arms, we can draw the arms coming in. If we wanted our arms to be more like muscular and stuff like that, we can draw humanized arms for them. That actually works pretty well too. And then our wings are gonna come from where our shoulders come up. So if we look at the human body and we make it do a push-up, Okay. If we make a human body do a push-up, our wings would come at the shoulder blade right here, right in the back of our arm. Our arm goes around and it comes back this way. Okay. The wing, here's our head. Our wings, if human had wings, it would be from this point. We would come up and then it would go one, two, three. From that point two, we can differentiate the little things and then this is how you would draw wings in different styles. You would go one, two. If you need feathers, you would draw feathers. One, two. If you have like a bat or a demon or something like that, you would fill it in like that. If you had something along the lines, I don't know, like a slightly more complex thing, you would just layer these. Butterfly wings are the same. Only they normally just go like that. You know, but you can still break it down the same way. Birds, pretty much anything that has wings is going to be broken down like this. Uh, so if you think about this, but you just add different elements. You can make a dragon out of a human. So the wings are gonna come from the back of your shoulders. Regardless of your dragon, let's draw a really TV dragon, okay? The wings are going to come from the back of your shoulders. And it's going to be, if you split your back in half, you're going to have a little W in the back. Try to center that in between those Ws. Your arm comes out here. Your hip bones come out here. Can't believe you're drawing an angel in the baby girl pose. What? What's a baby girl pose? Anyways, if you want to draw a dragon, I would tend to draw the head a little smaller than the body. The body will cone out from whatever that circle is you choose. Your eyebrows and your horns are going to come from where your, show, uh, your brow muscle is and from your cheekbone. That's where your muscles and your little spikies are gonna come out from. Um, your neck is gonna divide this in half. You can connect it with a circle to the actual body and then from there just flow through your body to come up with the tail. 
And then you can also make them super sooty and cute and adorable and you don't have to draw all the detail if you don't want to. You can just draw cute, adorable little things too, okay? You don't have to be relegated to drawing super badass ones all the time. Using that same knowledge, you can use it to draw super adorable ones as well. So the actual body in itself, a little bit smaller than the head, and then go down. Thank you for your teachings. After watching your vids, I feel confident drawing the frontal anatomy. Can you explain the back anatomy? Ooh, absolutely. So let's go into back anatomy. So, oh no, we, we said posing first and then anatomy. So actually that kind of plays into the same thing. So anatomy and posing from the back. So if you want to pose a character, you just need to literally understand how your rib cage and how your hips work. If you understand these two basic shapes, it's very easy to draw the rest of it. From a circle, if you draw a circle with two intersections like this, you can draw the middle one as your belly button. These two become the top of your hips. From here, you're going to draw a circle down, and that's going to be the width of your legs. From this, the outside edge, always start with this outside edge, Draw it in the whatever direction you feel your leg going. Draw your foot. And then you're gonna draw the inside volume. Overlapping lines give you the access to be able to draw them in two or a billion different directions. Here, you draw a compass, and then you do the same thing. You connect this circle to here. Now you have access to drawing the same thing. So understanding that should be relatively simple enough to be able to get, okay? So now that we understand a little bit of how to draw that body, drawing it from the back is very simple as well because it's very much gonna mirror the front. So we're gonna draw the front and the back really similar. Midline for our front, midline for our back. We need that midline to draw our spine. From the front, we draw a circle and we draw a compass. From the back, we don't see that circle, but we still see the compass. Okay, from the front, this circle is going to be the width of your neck and it's going to be the predecessor for your head and shoulders and neck. From the back, this tapers in a little bit, but you get that same effect. If you know where that circle is, it just matches nicely with the outside of that circle. When you go down your arms, this becomes the outside edge of your arms. Not the middle of your arms, not the stick figure version of your arms, that's the outside edge of your arms. From the outside edge to wherever you want your body to connect to it, you're gonna draw a little circle. Normally it's when it touches the rib cage. From there, you're gonna draw volume down into your hand. Your legs, you're gonna split that bottom circle in four. You're gonna draw a circle at the edges or from the hip bone tops that match that middle circle. And then you're gonna go down to whatever length your legs are gonna go. Your ankle is going to be predominant when you're looking at it from the back. Your foot, is gonna be predominant when you're looking at it from the front. So your ankle pushes that volume around it to the front. Cool. So now your back muscles. When you get to this area, when you split it in four and you draw your leggies going down, from the back, all you have to do is cap this right there and you have a semblance for a booty. Okay, you can always add more and more volume and stuff like that if you want to, but all you really need to do is differentiate that little section and you have yourself a butt. As you go up, you draw, the, you draw your egg, compass, and that compass is going to give you access to your back muscles that lead to your head, that lead to your 
like that. From here, your outside arm. This is gonna be your shoulder. So from here, you need to map one point here, one point here, and draw your shoulder. One point here, one point here, draw your shoulder. You can do the same thing from the front. Okay? From there, from this point, from that compass endpoint, if you go in, from the front, you get your pectoral muscles. Okay? If you do it from the back, you also get the wingy parts, but you need to add a W. If you add a dill W instead of a U, instead of a nice straight line, add a W, you get yourself the little wingy parts for the back of your body. From there, from that same point down to where your circle is, you end up with the sides muscles. And then again, from there, you just draw a little indent for where your booty is gonna go. If you go down your legs, you're gonna draw a circle going up to represent the calf digging into your thigh. If you're looking at this from the side, it would look a little bit like this. Your elbow and your forearm that wraps around your elbow. Mm -hmm. Why do you like drawing butts? Okay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just remove you. It's okay. We'll just ban you. Done. Bye. Anybody that threatens me is going to be automatically banned for sharing knowledge. Uh, that's the stupidest thing you can possibly do, man. <laughs> like somebody, somebody that's willing to give you any information for free, because I'm not charging people. Like you guys are donating and that's great, but I'm not charging you for the knowledge. Uh, anybody that's so stupid to do that, like, like just deserves to get blocked anyways. Doesn't matter. I don't care if it's a joke or not. Jokes with the intent to hurt someone like feelings or whatever or threaten them is not a joke. The fuck are you talking about? You can take those jokes and go do something else with them. <laughs> Anyways, posing, that was the back muscle. So posing in general, somebody donated for posing. So if you're gonna draw an egg and you draw a circle and you find those connecting points, right? You find the compass and you find those little circles, you find the little circles in that circle underneath. Well, once you have that, you have the ability to draw a really simple shape. But now this circle allows you to move this point anywhere you want and all of a sudden it's gonna look like a real leg, like it's doing things. Okay? So the moment that you learn how to connect those points, that is going to be the initial part of learning how to move your body. So, bye. No one is going to beg you to stay, dude. No one is gonna beg you to stay at all. Go away. I want you here, leave. Maybe he didn't mean to offend you, but sure, the live is yours. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't tolerate anybody disrupting my class. Anyone. And if you do it with intent to be a dumbass and asshole, then why would I want to uh, have you around? Again, I don't tolerate stupidity. And I don't tolerate uh, people being mean. So... Doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I 
Amazing drawing with pen. Next level skills. Yeah, it comes with uh, territory. Uh, to, 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 to do, how many years have you been drawing? I've been drawing for about 20 years. So I'm 40, and I started drawing when I was like 18-ish. So, yeah. Anyways, we are about $70 in. We need 30 more dollars. $30! And you guys can unlock... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to unlock. I just get to scan my books again. <laughs> so a circle with these little connecting points is going to be able to teach you how to post things in any direction you feel like. See what I mean? Like having access to those connecting points allows you to see things and map them out in a very simple way because it's just drawing two very basic shapes. Uh, please show a mask method for snake cobra head. Cool. So if you want to draw a snake, I would draw a, a little oval maybe. Draw an oval, draw a little circle in the middle, and then draw a triangle at the front. That triangle, the top of the triangle is going to be where your eyes are. Right? From there, cobras and some snakes tend to have a little muzzle. And then you just connect the top of that point to the top of that shape, bottom of that point to the bottom of that shape, and then you give yourself a little bit of more girth for the side of your jaw. You follow this circle around, generating any sort of volume for your shape based on that circle. And then if you want to add the cobra things, you just grab them from the top of the eye, draw a little circle, and then you can add that to the side of your drawing. Now, if your mouth is going to be open, you can take that triangle and you can open it up so you have access to drawing fangs and all that stuff inside. Can you give us a tip for foreshortening? Yeah. From different angles. No? Different angles call from just drawing that triangle in different angles, kind of like we did with the dragon. Right? If you draw that circle in a different direction, that's going to change where everything goes. So if you change the circle and you change that triangle, whatever shape you make, that is essentially going to change the direction of your face. See what I mean? From the back, it's just a matter of understanding that your circle is there and you have the body and stuff like that, but you have the little flare that's going to stick out beyond before the other stuff. So from the back, it's literally just that. Whatever shape you want. You know, you wouldn't really see much of the design. It would just be the flaring part of it. All right, so we are at $69. Now we only need 30 more dollars and Rod can afford his, uh, his scanner. So if you guys feel like actually asking something specific and you guys feel like donating, those people take priority. How would you draw an arm stretching your direction? So let's do very basic concept. So if we have a shoulder and we have our arm pointing down, it's just pointing down, right? If I need this pointing towards me, that means that this is gonna get brought up. This needs to be considerably bigger than the one here, and you can always map it back to it like that. If I have this, I can have a finger that's doing the same thing. Fingers doing the same thing. And you're going to have a little bit of overlapping lines. So you end up in a situation 
where you have a bunch of overlapping lines and a shoulder back here that will eventually lead to a face or whatever. So that's how you would go when you would approach something like that. All right. We are starting another page, maybe? Actually, no, you know what? I'm just going to call it for now. Uh, that way I don't have to start another page. But you guys got me really close to the goal, so we might be able to get the uh, scanner tomorrow. And I'll do this again tomorrow, and I'll just keep on doing these again whenever I need uh, funding for whatever... Uh, the studio seems to be growing considerably quickly, so it requires a little bit of funding. So it's all coming out of my savings right now, so I need to make sure that I get some sustenance, sustainable income coming in from these things. So if you guys do have the, an inkling to support, there are books that I sell as well. You guys can purchase those through my links in my bio, and you guys get something cool out of it. Alice Forever, what if you like it or not? Huh? Thank you for your awesome stream. You're welcome, guys. You guys are awesome. It's been about two hours, so I think we have covered a decent amount of things today. We started with drawing eyeballs, bean bags. I drew, uh, you know, what was his name? The guy from Berserk. Then uh, some people asked for different things, so we drew some different things, that dragon. Uh, and then we went into lips. You guys wanted to know lips. You guys wanted to know how to draw dragon faces in different perspectives. I taught you guys how to draw mouths. I taught you guys how to do that, how to do posing, how to do clothing, how to do El Villano logo types really quickly, how to draw clothing a little bit more. And I taught you guys dragon bodies, wings, body posing, more body posing, more body posing, booties, back muscles, and cobras. I think we have covered a decent amount today. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the donations. You guys are helping this channel grow considerably. So if you guys want to help me grow even more, just go subscribe to my YouTube channel and my TikTok channel. If you guys want to get better, I give free lessons every single day. Every single day, I am constantly on here teaching you guys multiple times a day so that you guys can level up and improve. So make sure to go check them out. <coughs> it's going to be on, it's going to be posted the moment that this gets finished processing. So it's going to be on YouTube forever. So you guys can go back and just like skim through it and figure out exactly what points you guys want to learn again. And it'll be there. You guys just have to go to my page and subscribe. All right. Later, Gators. You guys are awesome. You guys are dope. There's a new video getting posted in about one minute. One minute. There's going to be a new video from a stream from a couple days ago. So enjoy that. Thank you so much for the donations. To the people that donated, you guys are the people that are helping this channel keep on going. So thank you so much. Hope that the questions and the answers were good enough for the amount that you guys donated. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another stream. Take care, everybody. Later, Gators.